Hello there guys, it's Joey. So this is kind of a request. Yesterday I got my Witch's Brew Love Spells deck and today I got the other one I ordered. And I had a request to show the cards themselves. And I thought, well, I think we'll just do a video on the, on the pair of them. I'll do them as two separate videos so if people are interested in one and not the other they can check it out. So, first and foremost we have the Love Spells deck. This, I've ordered a second one and there will be one of these in the giveaway. So, get your entries in before it's too late. So, the Witch's Brew Love Spells deck is a little bit easier to get hold of than the other one. The other one being the three, the 36 good spells for every day. I managed to get hold of this one for £2.45. and pence. There was only one at that price. The one that's actually going to be in the competition actually cost more than that. But I was really, really impressed to find it at this price. It's got a price on the bottom of $9.95 US dollars. I don't know how available it is in America. Here in the UK it is not very available. So when I saw one for a pretty good price, I was like, mine. <laughs> so first and foremost, it's an awesome little box, and then you take the lid off, and there's the card. So it's quite a thick. You can't really squish it very much. So it's, you know, solid, sturdy, good casing. If that sort of thing bothers you. Right. So then inside the box, there's your box you get this sort of fold out instructional thing which we'll talk about in a second and then are these all the way yeah. up? I was having a flick through, I'm just making sure they're all the right way around yeah you get a deck of cards the artwork is to die for I am in love with the artwork and we will go through the artwork and show you the artwork and then we'll give you a few examples of some of the spells that they give. Right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that card just while we talk about the blurb on the, the opening booklet thing. Reminds me of, of a menu, one <laughs> of those fold out menus you sometimes see at restaurants. Right, so there are 36 spells for romance and passion. Okay, it says, Any witch will tell you that the most common requests for help involve matters of the heart. Not in my line of work, Rad. <laughs> it's the thing that sells the least. But okay, I can understand that uh, it's what a lot of people go looking for. Witchcraft is based on the knowledge that our destinies lie in our own hands, so why suffer the slings and arrows of love gone wrong when you can do something about it? Why spend a Saturday evening alone when you already know the object of your desire? Why doubt your own power to attract love when a little herbal chemistry can make you vir virtually irresistible? You can use this deck in many ways, depending on your needs or whims. Specifically perform a spell that addresses your specific desires, or employ the ancient form of divination, clerimancy, drawing a card at random and allowing the fates to input into your life. This look of the draw approach fulfills needs you are not consciously aware of. You also study a moon guide. Oh, sorry, you can also study a moon guide and go through each spell according to the moon or go through them one by one. This I'm not entirely sure about. This, this, this bothers me slightly. Or you can go through them one by one, spell by spell, so that you ply the Wiccan way and learn to grow along your path to selfhood. I noticed this in the other pack as well. It uses Wicca and Witchcraft interchangeably, and that irritates me, and that's going to irritate some people out there as well. But if you can... I mean, I'm going to look past it. It doesn't bother me too much, because I know what I'm doing. But given that this is probably aimed at beginners, generally speaking, it's a little bit irksome. I suggest you keep a journal of your spell work, keep a record of the changes, blah blah blah. Any good witch knows that the best ingredients for spell works can be found in one's own kitchen or backyard. Phases of the moon. 
a Sultan Almanac. <laughs> Create a love altar. And, and how to do that? Wow, there's quite a, there's a fair amount of information on how to create a love altar there, if if, if that sort of thing. So that's what, you know. There you go. Those phases of the moon. So, a little bit of information. Uh, again, it's it's not a huge book. Now, I will say this before I start showing you the images. I love the notion of having these as like a divinational tool. I like to shuffle through them and use them like you would a tarot and then have a spell that you perform based on what your intuition, what your gut, what your divinely led hand is telling you. So I love that. I love that idea. It's one of the reasons I got the cards. I think it's an it's an awesome idea. So we're going to go through the cards and have a look at the imagery. I don't think the imagery is particularly tied to the spell. Right, so I'll show you what I mean. So if you were looking at this particular card and you were guessing at the spell, I'll give you a minute and then I'll tell you what my initial feelings would be given the imagery. So I'll just sit here for a sec. Right, so there is... What looks to be symbols in the background, um, they look oriental, but I'm not entirely sure. And then you have a book with a dream catcher on top of it, and an, uh, a hand holding a, a staff with flames on it and wings. Right. So it's holding holding on to your dreams or the messages of love and dreams would be the idea that I would have from looking at this particular card because you've got dream catchers so it's like capturing your dreams and and making you know making sense of them and spellbinding for heartstrings on a strip of paper write the name of the your would be love in red ink and so on and so forth and a spell to get someone specific this is not something i think you <laughs> would find in a wiccan book this is a specific love spell for a specific person and how you feel about that is entirely up to you but i'm pretty sure that it goes against a wiccan point of view it may not go against certain witchcraft points of view, but it will go against Wiccan points of view, I'm pretty sure. Which makes the whole Wiccan thing in the start of the book pretty odd. But, I mean, hopefully, if if you're, like, in sort of interacting with these cards, or you're watching this video to get an idea of the cards, then this is kind of highlighting, you know, whether or not you are far enough and secure enough in your own opinion to sort of disregard certain bits and pieces or to not engage in certain spells if they don't sit right with you, hopefully. The artwork is lovely though, look at this, look at that. It's Some of them have quite a sort of almost Victorian style to them, some a little bit less so, they're all kind of sort of animatical or some of them are quite biological, some of them it's difficult to really put a finger on it. It's, it's somewhere between Victorian imagery and the anatomy type drawings and things like that. And then you've got, it's very witchy. Uh, these are, I'm pretty sure they are mandrakes. Oh, and it's mandrake root, so we're all right with this one. Right, there you go. Cur points for me identifying the image of mandrakes and then you have the ecstasy potion, a tea of mandrake. So there you go. Let's just go through the artwork now. So there you go, you have, you know, your, your luck, and that's sort of like an outline stem here, a beehive. Again, right, okay. Tell me what you think that's going to be. 
because I would have been like, you know, luck drawing because honey being sweet and drawing and the clover and you know. stones, which crystals to use. <laughs> Look at that. That's a little bit more Victorian feeling. It's pretty. Right, we're just going to go through the artwork now because otherwise... Aren't these gorgeous? I like that one. This one's got a crow to skull on. Hang on. I want to know what the spell is. Oh, Gypsy Love Herbs. And there you go. With the crow skull down the bottom. It's awesome. I don't know if you can, they're sort of the size of my hand. They're not huge, but they're not tiny either. There's no border. Uh, I know that borders often bother some people. I don't like it when it really interferes with the overall artwork of the card. So these having no art, no border to interfere is good. I like the beigey colour, the beigey tone. It gives it a sort of archaic book feeling. Gives it that sort of ancient sense of ancient witchery, ancient wisdom, even though probably most of it is more modern than that. It's a mostly modern approach to the spellcasting. that one. Isn't that beautiful? It's gorgeous. A little bit of palmistry there with the uh, diagram, traditional palmistry style diagram. That one suggests adding clove to your lip balm. I don't think I would ever do that. <laughs> that one looks morbid as anything with its dead hand. <laughs> what is that? Hang on, I must know. The breakup repair spell. But, but, uh, right, okay. There, there are no dead hands required for that spell. <laughs> So they're all of a theme, obviously. They're all love potions. They're all love magic or relationship magic or sex magic or lust magic. So it is the love deck. So there you go. Again, this one. This one is for a binding love potion to ensure a faithful relationship where you basically feed your lover this concoction so their loyalty will never waver and it doesn't really intimately suggest whether or not you have their permission to be doing that and again that depends on where you stand on your how you feel about it I'm not making any value judgments or value calls because you know it's each to their own you know what you're comfortable with as long as you're not judging anybody else. There we go. Look at that. Glamour. That one's a bit greener. That's nice. A lover's tea. And more, more hands. I don't know how I feel about that. The uh, <laughs> disembodied hands. Da, 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 da. To attract a new lover, that one. This one's inciting new love. Attracting an attractive stranger <laughs> to ensure blissful love. Make a love pillow. What's that one? Candle consecration. Talking about making a love temple. Enchanted inks. So some of them line up quite well with their imagers. Tantric Tristing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> New beginnings. Dream Lover Spell. 
uh, Altars and Goddess of Love. Song of the Siren Sacred Bathing, bringing water and bathing magic into love magic, that's interesting. Affirmation Ritual. And last but not least is Yohimbi Root Tea Ritual. Nature's Natural Viagra. <laughs> So there you go, that is the Lover's Spell Deck by Witch's Bree, by Witch Bree. It says it's Witch's Brew on the top and Witch Bree down the bottom, that's very confusing. Uh, 36 spells for Romance and Passion. The imagery is really great, I really love it, I think it's interesting and intriguing and I love the idea of this slightly different approach to spell work. Now, you're not going to be wanting to use all of the spells all of the time and there is going to be a line of thought with some witches that you should be writing and creating your own spells based on intuition, which I can see that point of view because nine times out of ten, if not more than that, uh, I do create and write my own. I believe there is a great power in it. However, there is something to be said for reading through this sort of thing, allowing your imagination to flow and allowing other ideas into your psyche and, you know, not getting jammed up by the way that you normally do things. So you might, you know, fancy trying something different. You might try the idea of divination through these particular cards, see what the spell is, try it out, adapt it to your own needs, take bits and pieces of particular spells that have different and have sat with you and make it part of the learning process. You know, there's nothing wrong with going back to slightly more simplified versions of things and trying out something that you may or may not have read about the first time round or learned the first time round. Just adding that to your repertoire, I think that can be fun and witchcraft needs to have a sense of fun within it. So that is the Love Spells deck. Many blessings.